Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Come on, the Husker volleyball team wins, the Husker football team. How you doing this morning? All righty. The head is outstanding. I hope all of you watching this morning are doing outstanding as well. Uh, because we're in the house of the Lord today. So no matter what's going on, Paul says it this way in Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. He didn't say rejoice about the situation you're in, but he says we can rejoice in the Lord always. And so right now this morning, no matter what's going on in your life, we can be doing outstanding because here's what I can tell you, you're loved by God. You're loved by God. And, uh, and that is incredible news for all of us. So we are glad that you're here today. My name is Pastor Lee. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, I'm uh, glad that you're here. If you are a first time visitor uh, in, the, in the room, please stop at the Welcome Center. We have a, a coffee cup we'd like to give you uh, just as a way to tell you thank you so much for being with us. Uh, those of you watching, I hope you take the time to check in. Uh, use the Church Center app that's on, uh, your, available on your phone. Uh, those of you in the room, I would encourage you to download that app as well if you've not downloaded it. Uh, it is very, very helpful. Not only does it allow uh, you to check in and let us know you're in worship, but it'll let you uh, know all the things that are going on at our Savior. So very, very useful tool. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer, and then we will get started. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you today for your goodness, for your grace, for your love, for your kindness, for your generosity, for the opportunity to be in your house, to be called the sons and daughters of God. For that, we thank and praise you now, and that we may thank and praise you for all eternity. In your mighty and holy name, we pray and God's people said, amen. amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hannah Schmela. I am one of the worship leaders here at Our Savior. And as Pastor said, this morning we are joining together in the house of the Lord. And there is great joy here uh, as we sing together, as we learn together, as we're in fellowship with one another. Uh, so as we get started, I invite you to stand and to sing with us this morning and to greet those around you with the joy of the Lord.
house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord.
the stone is rolled away. Behold the empty tomb. Amen. A little work in that Kevin might be able to get this thing and deal down. He's showing some progress. I don't know. Uh, it is that old rugged cross. And in that moment, Satan was convinced he'd won. But we know God had a plan. And his plan was three days later revealed for all of creation to see in an empty tomb. And because of that empty tomb, we can have courage to go to our God this morning and confess our sins, knowing that they've been overcome. Our Savior has overcome sin, death, and the devil. Would you join me this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for you are a good and gracious God. We acknowledge this morning that we've sinned and fallen short of your glory. What we deserve this morning is your wrath and your punishment because we've not loved you with our whole hearts and we've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And yet we believe your victory is our victory by faith in Jesus Christ. And so we ask, Lord, this morning you would forgive us, renew us, restore us, that we might serve you now, that we might praise you for eternity. In your mighty and holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you this morning before the God who searches the heart, is this indeed your confession? Do you acknowledge this morning that the death that Jesus paid on the cross was a death for your sins? And do you believe the victory he had on Easter Sunday morning is your victory by faith in Jesus Christ? If so, simply confess with these words, Father, forgive my sins. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your sin is forgiven. To be remembered no more. Go in peace. You are forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen? Amen. I invite you to stand and sing with us. Amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving God, you're so good God
to uh, uh, turn our attention this morning to the uh, prayers of the church. That prayer list uh, is printed for you this morning in your bulletin. I would add you to uh, keep those individuals whose names are listed there in your prayers. Uh, we want those of you who are watching to know we're praying for you as well, uh, that uh, this uh, ministry indeed is a blessing to you in several ways. We want to uh, keep several additional names in our prayers this morning. We want to uh, keep uh, Jackson Pouse in our prayers, uh, who is uh, in Omaha, a young man uh, who had a heart transplant and is having some difficulties. Uh, so Jackson, we want you and your family to know that you are in our prayers. We want to keep uh, Carlene Sommerfeld in our prayers. We celebrated with her and her husband just a few weeks ago as she had uh, uh, their second child. Uh, she has some complications. Um, and uh, so we want to keep Carlene in our prayers as she is hospitalized now. I want to keep my uncle Stan, my mom's twin brother, uh, fell last week. He lives in Columbus, fell uh, in a store, fell face down, broke his nose, uh, and three bones in his neck. So my uncle is uh, in the hospital in Lincoln. So if you would uh, keep him uh, in our prayers, we want to keep uh, Bill Bruning, the brother of Darren Bruning, in our prayers. Uh, Roger Caney, uh, we want to keep him in our prayers as he will be having surgery. And uh, we live in a world uh, that is broken by sin. I'm sure that's not a surprise to any of you. Uh, we got wars um, seemingly uh, all over the place. We want to especially remember the war or the conflict that is going on in Israel and in Ukraine this morning. Would you join me for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are a God of peace. And your peace is never more needed than in, when we are reminded of the wars and the anger and the bitterness that exist in our world. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would uh, be with especially those innocent victims who find themselves in harm's way. We ask your blessing upon those whose names we listed, those uh, who are printed in our bulletin, and those we know in our heart. We ask your blessing upon those who are watching this morning. We ask, Lord, that you'd bring he uh, health and healing and restoration to those who are sick, that you would give peace and comfort to those who will be undergoing surgery. Those who are facing difficult diagnosis, Lord, be with them, comfort them. Give them the joy that they are your beloved children and that this world cannot take that truth away from them. Father, we continue to lift up uh, the ministries that you've called us to here at our Savior Lutheran Church. We thank you for Pastor Kip and for his uh, Revelation Bible study and all that are uh, attending that and watching it on YouTube. We thank you for our Sunday school ministry, our middle school ministry, confirmation ministry, our high school ministry. Thank you for the opportunity to worship. We ask, Lord, that you would continue uh, to hold us faithful 
to the calling you have given us, pointing people to Christ in all that we say and all that we do. Father, all this we pray in your most holy and precious name, even as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to turn our attention now to the video announcements. This is just a small uh, snippet of all the things going on uh, this week at our Savior Lutheran Church. But let's check out what's going on uh, right now at our Savior. Hi everybody, welcome to worship with us this weekend. We are excited that you are here with us. We are starting our pie sales and our youth ministry. This is a fundraiser that we do every single year and there's information in the bulletin as well as youth. If you would like to sell some pies to earn some money for youth events, you can do that by picking up an order form at the Welcome Center or in the Senior High Room. Also, on November 21st, we are going to be doing our live nativity, partnering with the other LCMS churches here in Norfolk at the Hometown Holidays. It'll be that evening from 4.30 to 8. So mark your calendars. Soon we'll be looking for volunteers and items for that. Lastly, this coming Sunday at our 10.30 contemporary service, we will be having our confirmation service. This will be our largest class that we have had here at Our Savior. So seating is very limited. We are doing reserved seating for the family, so we only have single seats available here and there throughout the worship center. We encourage all of you to possibly worship at a different time that Sunday, between Saturday night, Sunday morning, or even online. Hey, Our Savior families. Last weekend, we gave away almost 40 Bibles to first graders. If you have a first grader that didn't receive a Bible, reach out to me or the church office and we'll make sure they get one. Hey, Our Savior, we've got some exciting news about Christ Connect. Christ Connect will be moving dates and locations starting on the 29th. On the 29th, we will start meeting on Sundays at seven o'clock in Union 73 on Northeast Campus. And we are also collecting information on where our college students are located so we can send them care packages in the coming months. Have a, uh, a student at college, be sure, and uh, make sure that their information is updated in the Church Center app. We're going to receive our offering uh, at this time. Uh, and i got some exciting news for you. So obviously, all of you know uh, about our, our parking lot. Um, uh, Sarah Barrett is our, our church treasurer, and she sent a note out uh, to the Mission Leadership Council. Because of your extreme generosity, we've been able to uh, uh, purchase some uh, rather large CDs. Uh, and we thought for sure, because we're going to have to cash some of those CDs in, uh, to pay for the parking lot because the parking lot was just short of $480,000 uh, to do. And uh, as it turns out, we had enough money in the bank account just to pay for the parking lot so we didn't have to cash the CDs in. So way to go, our Savior Lutheran Church. That's outstanding. We're hoping to get uh, our drawings uh, back by uh, about the end of December, the architect thinks. And so um, your generosity continues to allow us to uh, expand the ministry that is going on here. And we're looking forward to uh, that remodel that's coming. When you join me for a word for Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for these gifts that have been brought forward this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to teach us what it is to be good stewards. I thank you for the generosity of the people who call this church home, who are blessed by this ministry. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us be generous people for your kingdom's sake. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to turn our attention now to the reading of God's holy word. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 45. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. 
so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Our second reading is from First First Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all believers in Macedonia and Acacia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he has raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel comes to us from Matthew, the 22nd chapter this morning. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him among with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. We continue with the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. To the darkness, you're the only right among the wrong. You're the only hope among the chaos. You are the voice that calls me on. Louder than every lie, my sword in every fight, the truth will chase away. Speak 
the power to prevail Louder than every lie My sword in every fight The truth will chase away the night Your name is power over darkness Freedom for the captives Mercy for the broken and the hopeless darkness light arrives in heaven opens holy spirit let us hear it when you speak the church awakens we believe the change is coming holy spirit let us see it when you speak you scatter darkness light arrives in heaven opens holy spirit when you speak the church awakens we believe the change is coming holy spirit let us see it your name is power over darkness freedom for the captives mercy for the broken and the hopeless your name You may be seated for our sermon. Before we get started, I want you to get your bulletins out, and in your bulletin is this sheet of paper. Grab this sheet of paper out of your bulletin before we do a single thing. If you did not grab a bulletin on the way in, get one on the way out. Uh, This sheet of paper is going to be in your bulletin, uh, or one very similar to this. It'll change every week uh, for about the next two months, because for the next two months, we're going to be looking at this sermon series to the church from Paul. And, and we're gonna give you uh, daily readings and, and a QR code. If you scan this QR code, it'll take you to a YouTube site that will give you uh, an overview in about five to 10 minutes of the book of the week. So uh, this week we're looking at the book of Ephesians. You scan this code uh, and it, it, the YouTube videos are done by the Bible Project. Super, super cool video. So did anybody scan it last week and watch the Ephesians one? Anybody? Outstanding, one person, that's... Next week when I'm here, I want to see at least two hands in the air, right? Super cool stuff. And then um, throughout the week, so this week, starting on Monday through Saturday, we're going to encourage you to read one chapter of the book of of Ephesians every day uh, and throughout the week. And then by the Saturday, you'll have read the whole book of Ephesians. Or if if you're on YouTube or on Facebook or on um, Instagram, uh, we'll, we'll post there every morning, and there's a link, and you can just touch the link, and then you can have it read it to you. That's what I do. Yesterday morning, uh, I, actually this week, I, I listened to the entire book of Ephesians multiple times. Yesterday morning was the last time I had listened to it in preparation for my sermon. It took like 14 minutes to listen to the whole book. Right? Some of you have a 15-minute commute to work. Right? Listen to the whole book of Ephesians in one setting. I'm going to tell you this, that, that listening to the whole book of Ephesians uh, this week multiple times changed the way I think about the book of Ephesians. Because uh, 
at least for pastors, and I'm thinking for probably for you as well, I, I get in the habit of reading a section of a chapter of a book. Right? I'm writing a sermon or doing a Bible study, and, and I, I look at, at three verses in Ephesians 2. Six verses in Ephesians 5. But, but as I r- listen to the entire book of Ephesians from 1, 1 to 6, whatever it is, 21, I, I saw that this really is a letter with a theme, with, with, with flow and, and, and Paul hitting on different areas of interest, but keeping a single thread, at least in this book, through the entire book. So uh, I would encourage you to listen to it chapter by chapter, but maybe if you have time, listen to the whole thing, because it really is interesting. As we get started, I have a question for you. What, what's, what's God's plan? You know what God's plan is? God's plan for you, you know what God's plan is for you? You know what God's plan is for the people that you love? Your family, your kids, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, what's God's plan? Paul lays out God's plan for us in this book. And, and, and he starts right away in Ephesians chapter one, verse four. Uh, in Ephesians 1, 4, Paul says this, uh, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In, in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship to Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one that he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the richness, the riches of his grace. God has a plan. And, and, and his plan is for you to spend eternity with him in heaven. Be, before the creation of the world, it says, he predestined you. Think about that for a minute. Before God said, let there be light, Genesis 1-1 starts, in the beginning, the earth was formless and void. There was nothing, there was, there was just darkness. Be- before that, before time, when God just existed, he already knew you, because God's omniscient. He, he knew how, how his creation w- was gonna reject him. He, he knew the price that he was going to have to pay to redeem and restore you. And I don't know about you, but if, if I knew all that, I knew how, how bad it was going to be, how, how his first children, Adam and Eve, were going to disobey him, I, I, I might have just said, you know what, let's not go down that road. <laughs> because I know where it ends, on a cross outside of Jerusalem. Let's just not go down that road, but... But God went down that road, and you were created. And, 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 and this is God's will, this is God's plan for, for all of us to be in heaven. God wants you, God wants your neighbors, God wants your friends, God wants your relatives, God wants all of you watching. He wants all of us to spend eternity with him in heaven. That's his plan. And, and, and as Paul talks about God's plan, he, he, he talks about, uh, about how excited he is about it in Ephesians 1.15 and following, where, where he writes these words, for, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And I keep on asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, a glorious Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray, so right, this is a prayer. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the ones he loves. Remember, remember what my prayer was for you at the beginning of the year? That, that 2023 might become the most spiritually significant year of your life? Did you hear what Paul was praying for the Ephesians in 117? Let's look at that verse again. And this is my prayer, Paul says, verse 117. He he says that I I pray that that, um, you may get to know the Lord 
um, that your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you were called, the riches of inheritance of his holy people. One verse back, 17, I'm sorry. That you may know him, what? Better. <laughs> Folks, I, I, I hope every one of you know that you're uh, numbered amongst the sons and daughters of God by faith in Jesus. I hope all of you know that. I hope all of you watching, I hope that's true of you, and I hope you know that, and I hope you embrace that. But you know what my prayer is for you? My prayer for you today is the same that, of, as Paul's prayer for the Ephesians 2,000 years ago. I, I pray that you might know that better. I hope 2023 is the most spiritually significant year of your life. Because, because uh, no matter uh, how, how much we know Jesus, we're never gonna be able to mind the depth of his love. We'll never, we'll never get to the bottom of God's love for his children. And so my prayer for you, my prayer uh, for all of you watching, my prayer for me, my prayer for my family, uh, is that we all get to know him better. <laughs> that we come to a richer, fuller, deeper understanding of what it means that we are the beloved children of God. And you know what my prayer for you in 2024 is gonna be? I pray this is the most spiritually significant year of your life. because I want you to get to know him better and better and better every day of your life. In, in Ephesians uh, chapter two, uh, Paul continues in, uh, in two one. he says this, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used uh, to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So, so, so Paul says, this is who we are, this is God's plan, but let's not forget where we came from. E every one of us were dead, spiritually dead in our transgressions. And, and, and Paul uses uh, such stark, uh, harsh words to remind us the role we play in our salvation. Zero percent. Folks, this is incredibly important for us to understand and embrace because there are some Christian churches that would insist that you have to do something to be saved. Right? Even if it's just taking the first step, even if it's just uh, uh, praying a prayer of salvation, <laughs> just pray this prayer. No, I don't have to pray no prayer. Right? Paul says, I'm dead. Do, do dead people pray prayers? No. Right? Here's the analogy I use. Let, let's say I'm getting a, a, an appendix uh, surgery this week uh, and, and, I, and I code on the table and I die. Pastor Lee is dead uh, because of a botched uh, appendix uh, surgery uh, in a barn somewhere. It went bad. I don't know what happened. And, and am I going to be able to say to the doctor as I'm laying on the table dead, hey, doc, quick, get the paddles. They might help. Hey, Doc, give me a shot of that. It might get my heart going again. No, you know what dead people say to doctors? They don't say anything. And if that person is, is gonna be resuscitated, it's solely by the work of the doctor and their team. The great physician, Jesus, has performed heart surgery on you. And you used to be dead and now by the grace of God, you're alive. He gets 100% of the credit for your salvation. You don't have to pray a certain prayer. You don't have to meet him halfway. You don't have to finish it out, right? You don't need people praying for you for a thousand years after you die, so maybe you'll get into heaven. Jesus Christ has done the work. You are saved by faith in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, and 10. Martin Luther's, one of Martin Luther's favorite verses, uh, he says this, for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith, this not from yourselves, it is what? The gift of God. Folks, if I have some role in my salvation, it's no longer a gift, it's a wage. Right? If I have to do something to earn something, then, then, then I'm getting a wage. I'm getting a reward. But, but Paul clearly says here, it's a gift so that no one can boast, for we are God's workmanship. I like the old uh, NIV says we are his craftsmanship. Uh, the one translation says we are his masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Salvation is an absolute, total, and free gift 
to you, to you, to everyone on planet Earth from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wills and desires for everyone to be saved. Pastor Keith Christensen, pastor we used to have, used to ask this, this question, true or false, everyone in heaven uh, is, is a forgiven sinner. Yeah, everyone in heaven is a forgiven sinner. True or false, everyone in hell is a forgiven sinner. It's also true, Jesus died on the cross to forgive all sins. <laughs> Some just rejected the free gift that he freely offered them. It is a absolute free gift. And, and Paul, uh, in response to that gift, in response to the faith that he sees in Ephesians, uh, Paul uh, uh, prayers, prays again in Ephesians chapter three, uh, verses 14 and following, he says, for this reason I kneel before uh, the Father, for whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name, verse 15, now verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner beings so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God now to him is able to do immediately be more than we could ever ask or imagine according to the power that his work, his work within us. To him be the glory and in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations for, forever and ever, amen. Paul says, this is my prayer for you in, in, verses, in verse 17. I pray that being rooted and established in love, you, you may uh, come to know how, how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of God. Remember what I said earlier? We'll never be able to mind the depth of God's love. But, but, but this is my prayer for you, that, that as you continue in this journey, as, you, as, we, as, as we spend time in worship, as we, as we share our faith with those around us, we, we come to a fuller, richer, deeper understanding of the width and the breadth and the depth and the height of, of God's love. And not just for us, but for all his children. Right? We think that the love of God is, a, is as big as this room, and it's, it's, you know, it's like bigger than the largest stadium. It's larger than the new sphere that they built in Las Vegas. It's boundless. I pray that you might come to understand the, the, the length and the width and the depth and the breadth of the love of God. And then uh, uh, in, in verse 20, verse 20 is, is amazing to me. He, he says this, and now to him is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. That, that's quite a statement, isn't it? I, I don't know about you, but I got a pretty vivid imagination. <laughs> and, and Paul says that, that uh, we have a God who's able to do immeasurably more. Right? I, can't even, I can't even quantify how much more God can do than I can ask or imagine. It's immeasurable. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Do you believe that Jesus can do that? Do you believe that we serve a God who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine? I do. I do because I remember uh, eight years ago when city officials said, no, there will never be a church in that Budweiser building. Remember that? There will never be a church there. And, and then uh, on Friday afternoon, Hannah's flying back uh, from St. Louis to, through Chicago to Omaha. She's flying on Southwest, and she's, uh, you know how in Southwest you gotta like, get in the aisle, right? She's in section C, group 34, because we ain't spending any extra money on her, so she's way, <laughs> she's like way in the back. I guarantee she got a middle seat. <laughs> She's, she's standing there at O'Hare, or uh, not O'Hare, wherever Southwest flies into in Chicago. She's waiting there at Midway, and uh, she notices this couple just keeps like looking at her. Finally, the lady comes over and says, 
are you that girl that sings at our savior in Norfolk? She said, you mean the one where Pastor Lee preaches? <laughs> There'll never be a church in that building. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Not only is there a church in this building, but because of NCN and the internet and our website and YouTube, we're reaching thousands of people. Not, not just here in Norfolk, not just in Northeast Nebraska, but around the world. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. And we serve a good God, huh? So, so Paul concludes uh, the book of Ephesians 4, 5, and 6 just by uh, kind of talking about what, what, this, what this being called a son or daughter of God looks like. And, and, and he uses a, a great analogy starting in Ephesians 4, uh, 22, where, when he says this. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So, so uh, th this, is, this is God's plan for you, that you would uh, be saved, that you would come to the knowledge of truth, that you would continue to grow in your understanding of the height and the width and the depth and the breadth of God's love, and that as that happens, you begin to take off the old self, the old Adam, the old sinful desires, and, and you begin to close yourself with, with the new stuff, the new Adam, the robe of righteousness that God has provided for us. And folks, that's not easy, is it? Some of you have been followers for Jesus for 40, 50, 60, 80 years. And, and there's still this old dirty garment you're wearing around. That, that, that sin that's just embedded into your life. And, and Paul says this, this is, this is what I want. I want, you to, I want you to take off those old clothes because you don't need them no more. Because you got a beautiful new set of clothes right over here provided to you by Jesus. I want you to take those off and I want you to put these on. Why does Paul want us to do that? If, if, if I get rid of more sin and I, and, and I become more and more righteous, does that mean God's gonna love me more? No, remember, uh, it's by faith that I've been saved, not by works so that no one can boast. <laughs> Why is it important for me to take off these clothes and put on these clothes? Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, you're the light of the world. It's not gonna make Jesus love me anymore, but you know who you are? You're, you're, the, you're the image of Jesus where you live, where you work, where you play. And, and, and and your friends and your neighbors and your family and your coworkers, people you love and people you don't even know. When, when we start clothing ourselves with these clothes, <laughs> they see just how beautiful Jesus can be. They see just how beautiful the church can be. And how does that happen? How, 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 do, I, how, how do I get power to take this off? How, how do I get power to put this on? Well, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? I can't just say, today's the day. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And you know how the Holy Spirit works? The Holy Spirit uses the word of God. We're back where we started. The Holy Spirit uses God's word to change us. To help us grasp how high and how wide and how deep and how long is the love of God. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to help us take off those old sinful desires and lay aside anger and wrath and jealousy and take on love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and peace so that people that we know and love might be pointed to Jesus in all that we say 
in all that we do. Our Savior lives in church. We're doing this long sermon series. I don't like sermon series that are eight, nine, ten weeks long. I, I got too short of attention span. But we're doing this, this sermon series. Remember where we started when we did the All In series? Gather, grow, go. This is a grow series. The Holy Spirit grows us as we spend time in the Word of God. My prayer during this sermon series that you begin to grasp how high and how wide and how long and how deep is the love of God for all his children. Amen? Amen. Amen. Join me forward for Heavenly Father. We thank and praise you today for your amazing love, your amazing grace. We thank you that you are God who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine a God that called us since before the creation of the world to be your children. Father, there are people in our lives that you want to know that you're your children as well. We pray that you would help us be your hands, your feet, your voice, your heart in this lost and dark world. In your mighty holy name we pray and God's people said, amen. Let's go ahead and stand up for our closing songs as we stand. Receive the blessing. Hold your hands out if you'd like to to receive this gift from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen? Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord. Good morning, Our Savior family. Thank you so much for joining, uh, joining us for Sunday morning worship. It is such a beautiful day and blessed day today. Uh, we want to uh, thank you for being on. If this is your first time, welcome. Thank you for taking the time for being with us. Um, my name is Carlos. I am a technical coordinator here, um, and I am with my buddy Joe. Yep. <laughs> I am the youth and tech assistant here at the church. We're so happy to have you on. Um, it's it's a beautiful morning this uh, this morning, and you can see uh, that in the point we have so many uh, people fellowship sh fellowshipping and, and eating donuts. And today is a very special day because we have homemade donuts today, Joe. It is the best. <laughs> week of the month because we have homemade donuts and i always look forward to this week yeah. getting the little smoky filled donuts oh God, those are I my favorite those. again if you are new thank you so much this is um our point this is um, a, a special place that we have um where all of our members really come in uh, fellowship or you know get donuts or get their coffee and stuff like that so again if this is your first time you know this is what it looks like on sundays yeah <laughs> this room is often filled with Tons of people drinking coffee, yeah, eating donuts, yeah. waiting for their kids to pick them up from yeah, Sunday school yeah. as they all congregate over here. Yeah, so uh, if you are in the northeast part of Nebraska here in Norfolk, come on down. We, we invite you to come over. We have uh, worship services on at 9 o'clock yep. and then 2 at 1030. Um, so we have a couple of different worship styles, um, but you are welcome to come at, uh, to any of them. Um, yeah. So we have a beautiful uh, little segment today. Uh, we have Joe on with us because he actually works with, not only does he work and do a lot of other things at our church, yep. he leads a college-age ministry Bible school, Bible study, sorry, yes. Bible study, yes. and uh, we're going to talk about that here in a bit, but before we do that, uh, we are going to meet who Joe is. I mean, some people might know already, but, you know. Yeah, some people <laughs> don't know who I really am. They just know me, that guy that at our savior <laughs> but always doing everything <laughs> doing a little bit of everything yeah very good joe so where are you from man um i am originally from columbus okay um that's where i lived for 18 years of my life practically right. did you were you uh grew up there yeah okay and, and you were born there yeah oh my gosh born, born and, and raised. raised good good for you um now and you just started with our savior how many years ago well, really, when did you start frequent? Because I know you you just started working with us. But. Um, I started frequently after August 15th, kind of, around there of 2022. 2022, yeah. 2022. Huh. And um, how has been, what has been your experience here at the church? Um, well, the church has been a new family for me. Yeah. I am a big person that finds family in the people I'm around. Yeah. So it's been really great that way and just knowing and getting to meet all sorts of people. Good. And I always try to ask uh, whoever is with me, you know, that, that's either a staff or volunteer, what makes our Savior our Savior? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> you should have prepped me with these questions before. <laughs> Catching um, you off guard. <laughs> um, I would have to say the people. Yeah. Because yeah. we are so big on helping point other people to Christ yes, as it's yes. in our mission statement. Yeah. But then, like we're with 
like we grow with each other. Yeah. And I feel like that's what's so important is having those relationships and all of that. So this place is the best place to get that. Oh my gosh. And there's so many opportunities for connection, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, you can meet someone, you know, that's, 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 what different from you or, yeah. or different age group or, or whatever and you can connect yeah. still huh and then it's great because like pastor lou was talking about like people recognize us in public yeah. like how hannah got recognized on the plane <laughs> people see us in public and go hey i know you oh my and gosh it's just so great that's awesome and we want to thank you if you see it i, I know i've been stopped and i want to you know give a couple shout outs i was stopped at hyvee by uh, an amazing couple that watches online um but we, we we really enjoy that you know it's not really doesn't really give us a big hit or anything but it's no. just awesome to know that like people are actually watching and and connecting with us so again we want to thank you for being part of the family that way yeah. you know now we're talking about college age ministry that's an opportunity that we've been, we, we've been trying to get you know yep. off the ground for a while and uh we had a couple of uh, uh of uh, bible studies here at church but what's yes. what's different now what's new so what we're gonna do a little bit differently now is we're gonna take it to the students all right so we're pulling people that are here on Sundays and stuff like yeah. we normally do. Yeah. But we can get a bigger engagement if we take it to campus. Sure. So I was like, why don't we go for the students unless instead of trying to have them come to us, yeah. let's go to them. Yeah. And that's such a beautiful uh, way of thinking of it, because, I mean, it's just easier. It's a nice way. I mean, you're going to find college kids in college, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What, so what are the details? When when can when can a college age person you know join join yeah um well you can join any day like email me any point and i can give you all the information sure if you ever forget but it on tuesdays it's this tuesday and then we'll be switching over to sundays at seven o'clock okay and we'll meet in one of the rooms in the student union at northeast yeah um and we do worship we host a devo yeah and have great fellowship and snacks. Good, good. And you got great music. I'm Hannah. Hannah's yep. part of it too. We have know? Hannah as part of it, and I'm always willing to get more people there on board. There you go. So. And what's the age group? I mean, what do, what, what's the target that you're looking at for for age group? So, my age group is anyone that has graduated high school and is in college, or even if you're not in college, you can still come. Um, we the kind of rough cutoff age. We really don't have one, but like. <laughs> Okay, maybe you're not in college anymore. Is like 26 is 26? where we're saying okay, that. So like, okay. basically 18, 19 to 26. All right. So could I pass for a college? I mean, could I go? Uh, I don't <laughs> think you fit that category, but I have a bone to pick with you. Yeah. You, you I, I always get the, that I look a little younger, but you always remind me how old I am. So <laughs> hey, <laughs> when I first met you, I thought you were like early 20s. So okay, now you really let me have it though. Uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. So that around that age group, and you, if you're going to be uh, in, in college on Sundays, seven o'clock, really nice time. I mean, where yep. you're, you're, you're bringing down, you're going to get started with the week. But how about get started with it with, with some Bible study and some yep. devotionals, maybe a little bit of music, maybe some yep. snacks. Man, great way to start off the week. You know, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, and I love it so much because just getting to be around people your own age and study the Bible, oh my God. like. That is something that you can't, like, try to replace. Exactly like, right. Like, being with people your own age and growing with yeah. people your own age yeah. is something that everyone deserves. Oh, man. And and it's our mission to really get it out there, point people to, to Christ uh, that way. So, Joe, thank you so much for allowing us to, to, to talk to you and to meet you. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, we invite you out there uh, starting next Sunday at 7. Starting right? next Sunday, the 29th. Very good. And uh, if you have any questions, you can give us a call. Uh, our phone number is not up right now, but it's 402 402- Three seven one nine zero zero five. You can text us or call us to get some more information about that. Yep. Um, you can look at our website. Joe's information is on there. Yep. My information is on there too. And and you know you can you can get someone someone to point you the someone right way. Someone can you know? give you the instructions you need. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, Joe, uh, I want to pre- I want to thank you again so much for for being on with us. I'm going to have another person come on. Joe, thank you. And again, if you guys have any questions, just give us a call. We'd love to have you come over. Again, today is uh, Homemade Donut Day, and we're going to have Kevin come on here. 
<laughs> you might have recognized Kevin. Uh, he was singing in the band today, and he did a phenomenal job. Brother, oh, how you doing? I'm doing it. Sorry I had to bring my tea. I'm a little oh, hoarse right fine. now. I'm doing a lot of singing oh, lately. Oh, I know so, you are. You're doing uh, some singing, man. But it's, uh, it's, you know, it's what we love to do. You know, if we can set our praises to God, that's oh, what it's my all gosh, about, that's man. That's awesome. We're no just doubt. talking about, um, you know, college age ministry and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With Joe, and, and, and he's a great contact with that, but wanted to talk to you and, and, and see how you're doing. And there's a lot of people that are just joining us for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I introduce myself. My name's Carlos. What, if you want My to name's introduce Kevin me? Becker. I am one of the worship team members here. I'm a, one of the drummers, vocalists, help Carlos with sound here and there. Uh, my wife, Deb, is actually on the camera committee. So uh, we really thoroughly enjoy serving here oh very gosh, much. Brother. It, it just means so much to to touch somebody if we can yeah. somehow, some way. Absolutely. You know? Just a connection and, and is, to be able is. to worship together. Now, uh, we're just going to ask you a couple questions to, sure. to get the viewers yeah. to know you. Yeah, where are you from? I'm originally from West Point, Nebraska. Okay. Oh, West Point, all right. Uh, which is, I moved a whole 40 <laughs> miles to get here. <laughs> long drive. Uh, my wife's originally from Plainview. Right. Uh, we've been in Norfolk a long time. Good. Um, <laughs> excuse me, I think we've been members here 21 years, something About like 21 that. 21 years, think. wow. I originally started with the praise band in the old church yeah, before we moved yeah. over you, here. Yeah, you, so. you were the leader, one of the leaders. At one time, yeah. when the worship director left, yeah, I, yeah. I was uh, the kind of the worship leader here. That was That's a, amazing. It was tough. Oh, I bet, bro. Uh, what, yeah. what, what, what difference do you see from this space that everybody's able to see, you know, or mm -hmm. from a traditional side to a contemporary side to the point? What are the differences that you would say, you know, from the old building or the old church to now? I, I think this is so much more open. So, so there's, you know, the, the other church, the, the, the sanctuary part was way up front. Yeah. The, con the, the uh, contemporary, excuse me, was way in the back. Mm -hmm. Here it's all in the same area. Yeah. So, and, it, you know, it doesn't make any difference if you come to the contemporary, you come to the traditional. We're all here worshiping God. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make any difference. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's to the choice that you like. Yeah. You know, I grew up. Uh, with the hymns yeah, uh, and yeah. the responsive readings, that that's how I was raised. Yeah. You know, I was actually raised very old Missouri Synod Lutheran German. <laughs> there we go, man. That's yeah. that's different. Huh? Yeah, yeah. My you know, uh, I actually have a Bible at home that's all German. German. Wow, yeah. amazing, brother. But um, I, I think it's it's all boils down to you know, like like for yourself and myself. God gave everybody something. Yeah. Something that we can do to praise Him. It doesn't yeah. have to be something big. Yeah. It doesn't matter as long as. We take it to Jesus. Jesus takes it to God. That's all that matters. Oh my gosh! And is there? I mean, can you only play the drums, or can you only play the guitar? Can you only? I mean, is there? Is there a lot of things that we that someone can do to connect to this church? Oh, you just. Or be, is there? Is there only? Is there only praise team opportunities? Absolutely, absolutely not. <laughs> if you would ju even just come here and be a greeter, yeah. Or just come here and have coffee and, and socialize. Yeah. That's all it takes. You oh know, my you, gosh. you don't have to, like you said. Put in the time that we do as with the praise band, the yeah. worship team, and yeah. stuff. Um, there, yeah, there's so many opportunities here. There, the youth group. The, yeah. the, there's some stuff that for elderly people yeah. like myself. <laughs> oh, brother, <laughs> don't even say that. <laughs> but, but there's so many connections that you can make, yeah. and that's what we want. We want people to make a connection. Yeah. We want people to feel home here. Yeah. Because our our job is pointing people to Christ. Yes. Yeah. That's our job. And and we invite you again if you are in the area. Would you invite someone to come out? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every anybody that watches us on TV or or hears about or sees us on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I invite you to actually come out here and experience. Yeah. What's going on? If you look behind, all yeah. the people and yeah. the kids really experience this. Yeah. To see it on TV is one thing. To actually be here is another. It's another thing. Yeah. It is. It's quite uplifting. It really and, is. And again, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to watching us, this area, I know you can barely see it on the camera there, but it's called the Point, and it's huge. You know, we can fit. Yes. We can fit 800 people in oh, yeah. here. You know, easily, we easily. we sometimes do. Next week <laughs> is going to be one of well, them. That's going to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. We definitely have uh, such a great opportunity to come and connect um, because that's what it's about, brother. You know, I know we always say that, but it's just so simple. Well, it's 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 a matter of connecting. You know, we've yeah. met and gotten to know a lot of people through the church affiliation here, yes, yes. and have become friends. Yeah. Um, it you know it's, it's 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 interesting. You know how how the the worship team we're like a family. Oh yeah. If there's something wrong with one of them. <laughs> One of us, everybody's there. I yeah. mean, it just is, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and back 
like this morning, we're laughing and joking with each other right, and having yeah. fun. And I think it shows when we're up singing to that. Yes. It's not a show. We we want the congregation to sing with us. To get of involved. course, of course. That's what it's about. But we know? wanna we wanna show that we have the joy of the Lord. I mean, we we do. I well, mean, there's no way other way to, to hide know, it. You when know? we're up there smiling, <laughs> it's not because we told each other a joke yeah, over the earphones yeah. or something. Because we enjoy worshiping to God. Absolutely. Taking, taking to Jesus and Jesus takes it to God Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And God does so many great things. I know the pastor was talking about the amazing thing that things that God has done with this church, even with this building, oh, everything, you know. For no longer than we've been here, we're running out of room. <laughs> right, right, aren't and we? And we thought, well, how, you know, oh. what are we ever going to do with all this space? Oh, my gosh. So I think God's working some wonderful, wonderful oh, things. Oh, my gosh. Here. We had to, look at the, how we had to add to the parking lot. Yeah, we, we, we just added, so there is no worries about parking lot. We're no, almost out no. to 25th Street, yeah, right? Not far <laughs> from it. Not so, far from it. Yeah, yeah. yep. But again, it, we invite you to come out. It, we have so many things during the week, too. We got Bible studies on Tuesday. Yes. We got Bible studies on Wednesday. We got Bible studies on Thursday. Yeah, we're on one on Thursday mornings. Yeah, yeah we got some on uh, Sunday mornings too uh, with Pastor Kip. Yeah. Um, and Re <laughs> Revelation. If you, you have know? not been to one of Pastor Kip's Bible studies, you really need to go to one. Oh my God. It's not only enlightening and, and worshipful, but it is hilarious. I got the boys this morning today. I, you know what? They are adorable. They are. I was just noticing the dinosaurs that he yeah. had on his phone. Yeah. There. That's pretty cool. We're we'll get them on camera here. Well, I think uh, here should. soon. Yeah. <laughs> But we're going to have Pastor Lee come up. He's talking to people. But Imagine that. <laughs> and it's kind of funny how they, you know, we get recognized sometimes, you know, at, at airports or at the store or something. Yep. And I've what, had does that, that happen to you sometimes? Oh, I've had it happen many times. <laughs> I, I went out and back to the checkout counter. The lady looked at me and she goes, you're that guy. <laughs> you're that guy. <laughs> and I go, no, did I do something right? Just, no, you're that guy on Sunday mornings. I see drumming or singing. Yeah. But it's very yeah. cool, and I thank them, and then I invite them. Yeah. I said, well, yeah. if you've seen us, you need to come here and yeah. see it. Yeah. Brother, it's really cool. something unique about you, I don't mean to put all the attention on you, but you, you are actually uh, you're a musician that you, you, you have gigs outside of, uh, yeah. of here, and you're actually... In the Hall of Fame, aren't that you? Is, yes, oh I am goodness. in the Nebraska Music Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yes. That's uh, amazing. How was that experience for you? It was wild. Oh. You know, I was really surprised. A uh, lot of, lot of great names that my name that I've been put with. Um, people don't realize how many musicians have come from the Nebraska oh, area. But yeah. It was a true honor for me. Yeah. Uh, very humbling. Very humbling. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I play in. Uh, I have a secular band that yeah. I play in, and then I'm a fill-in drummer and singer for and other a groups. Couple other so bands. I, yeah. I stay pretty busy. Well, good, yeah. brother. It's yeah. good. And then, then you have, and you come and help us and volunteer all the time, you know, yeah. with worship or worship you know, any other events. Worship whatever and stuff. it takes. Yeah, yeah other events. Uh, yeah. Halftime show. <laughs> and the halftime show, yeah. Here about a year ago, my wife and I cooked brats for the youth. Oh, yeah. Group, yeah. And then they were they sold them to make money, to raise yeah. money to, for one of their trips. So that was, that was oh, awesome. Oh, that's awesome, oh. brother. Do you have any shout-outs that you want to say hi? You know, people that are watching that you want to say, you know what? I would just say to anybody, you know, <laughs> hey, we're, we're, it's great that you're with us. Love having you here. Uh, I invite you to come uh, worship with us here. But, hey, if you see me on the street, stop and say hi. Yeah. I love it. I really would like to visit with you. Would like to talk to you. Yeah, just be awesome. We have a couple of shout outs out here. We got we got Jill Godfrey watching from Okaboji. Wow, yeah, really? Thank you so much well, for hey, watching. Thank you. Uh, Judy Bates is watching. Uh, Mary Hurley, good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, to Nancy everybody. Nancy Dolish from Pierce. Pierce, all right, yeah. Oh man, let's see here. Emma Powell, good morning. Ginger Bruzek, good morning. Uh, Kevin Baker, what? There's another Kevin Baker. <laughs> well, it'd be Baker. I'm Becker. Oh, Becker. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> he can't, got, I'm sorry. He can't I got to get some laughs in there. <laughs> well, it, well, we've got a little one here. There you go. All right. Oh. Look at this guy. Look at this boy right wow. here. You know what he does every time he gets a microphone? What does he do? Hello? Check one, two. Hey, I'm new. Check one, two. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him young so that way he can help me out. You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> well, we got we got another brother well, here. We two favorite well, drummers. We, <laughs> hey, what's going on here? What's going oh, on, brother? I got nothing. Just a gorgeous day outside oh, today. Absolutely yes, beautiful. Yeah, I can't wait to get out and enjoy it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. See you later, later. John.
That was John. If you're new to the channel again, he's he plays the bass and he's mm -hmm. playing guitar now. Uh, but he's a great friend. You know, we always have him on. And he's yeah, he's one of the team members. Like I said, you know, this team, we've all gotten kind of we're like a little family. So I see somebody coming here. Oh, I'll bet's got something oh, to finally. say. Oh, no, no, you can stay here. How you doing? <laughs> How are we doing horse. Oh, we're doing <laughs> outstanding. We're doing outstanding. How about this boy, huh? Oh my gosh, we got quite the boy with us. We got quite the boy with you too, bro. Hey, it's uh, it's always fun. Uh, and now, is there a way for the people who are online um, that they, they can get that code and stuff like that, or how? I mean, do we, is that is that? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. What code? What, uh, the, like so, they, like that's on the insert. So what you can do, this, you this can, one here. Yep, you can sign up here with. Uh, our bulletin or the church center app oh, and, church center and app, it's yeah. going to show Thanks, um this uh thank you thank you brother thank you kev it's going to show uh this insert here that's going to have the code now you can sign up on through email okay or just go through our website and download our bulletin it's going to be right there okay yeah. and uh, have you watched any of those videos yet they are super oh, cool oh my man. gosh brother yeah so they, they're, they're like animated yes, deals. yes yes i have i mean yeah, they're yeah. really those cool those are wonderful because they, they, they simplify it a little no, they, bit so you can understand here's the whole story of this, of this book yeah uh and here's the themes and here's the way it goes yep. and so and this uh, is great because it's going to have uh, a bible study or, or, or a little reflection yeah a little each reflection day. yeah so uh, this is the verse out of chapter one verse yep. out of chapter two verse out of chapter three so they're five uh six six chapters yeah and so we're highlighting six uh six verses uh but yeah so I, you can go to our our, our website you can go website. to our, our yep, um, yep. facebook page yep. every day we're we're yep. posting and then there's just a link yep. there all you have to do is click oh the link my gosh. and you can read it it's super easy we invite you to stay connected throughout the week we've been talking about how we can connect to our savior the viewers online absolutely and right. we have things going on tuesday wednesday thursday yep. sometimes friday yeah. saturday and sunday so there's all kinds beautiful of stuff, opportunities man. to do it okay, brother good. how about this letter from paul man yeah it's a good one isn't oh it? my god reminds us who we are yep. says before creation oh. Right? Before our, yeah, before creation, before anything. Right. And God still saw us, knows yeah. all our junk. Yeah. It still says, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go you. down this road. Yeah. I and want I'm you. Going to, and I'm going to show my love this way. Yeah. How, just crazy. It, crazy. It, it, it's, it's hard to understand, obviously, because we, we can't, how do we understand God's mind? We can't. We can't. But but we, who is able to do immeasurably more than we oh ask or imagine. Gosh, what, a, what a line that is, right? Oh. Immeasurably more. Brother, we are blessed. We are blessed and highly favored. We are I blessed. <laughs> we are indeed, indeed blessed. Hey, where are you watching from? Uh, so, so text uh, 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 9005 Had some people say they're in Destin, Florida. Oh, on are vacation. they really? Yeah. Oh my uh, god! Somebody gosh. down in Texas. How about Hannah getting recognized <laughs> in Chicago? Amazing. Right, right. And that's not. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's got to be like the, the odds of that is crazy because Chicago <laughs> is huge. <laughs> and being at an airport in Chicago, I was like, hey, are you that girl? Yeah. Crazy. So where are you watching from? I have I just someone that I want to shout out. Yeah, who's I want to shout out your mom. Oh, yeah. Sandy, you're watching. I know you're watching. <laughs> I, I want to say hi. Thank you so much for thinking and watching yeah. and thinking of me. You yeah. know, I want to She go. loves you. She loves you, brother. <laughs> well, I love her. So. Yeah, and, you, and Kevin is singing. Like, yeah, I mean, she well, loves you, but like, you know, Kevin's like her hero. I can't sing like Kevin. I'm sorry, <laughs> Sandy. I can play the drums yeah. like him. You're not old enough to sing like Kevin. You we're getting pushed over okay. from from, from uh, the directors here. <laughs> so, over to traditional over worship. Traditional. So we'll see you all next week. God we bless you, everybody. We want to say thank you so much for being here. Pastor, you get going. <laughs> Eric, why don't you come and say something with us? Come on, brother. <laughs> You're pushing us along. I'm, I'm the one pushing him, yeah. <laughs> this is Pastor Eric. If you're new to the, the channel, this is Pastor Eric. He's one. He's our associate pastor. You have a nicer mic than I do now. Yeah, I know you. I know I do. <laughs> I talk to. I talk more than you do. <laughs> Except for what I sub for you. Yeah, but oh, what do you need? Really? Uh oh, and um, oh yeah, the sermon that might be a good thing. How long have you been here? Uh, three years now. Three years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What well, what has been your experience in a couple minutes? <laughs> has to be put on the spot <laughs> i mean it's i've been in a lot of a lot of big churches in my in my life yeah and i mean every church has its own personality but this is a personnel i've told this to other people this is a church where we don't have to offer classes or make members take classes on how to be nice at the front mm -hmm. door mm -hmm. how to how to be hospitable yeah other churches have been a part they've had to teach yeah. that here it, it just exudes it naturally happens. Well, it it's happened like, to me. It's a different, yeah. Like people tell me, it's a different vibe when they walk yeah, in. Yeah. That it's just, yeah, we don't have to teach people to be nice to exactly. each other or, like, or 
or like set the expectation. You got you got to be <laughs> caring when when you're a member here. Yeah, it happens naturally. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And and again, you was you guys are all welcome. Would you invite someone to come over? Well, I'm a pastor here. It's kind of my job. <laughs> of course I would. I mean, I hear it all the time. People yeah. have watched it at a distance, maybe yeah. since the beginning of the pandemic, and say, hey, I'm going to try it out. And if that's you, if you're on the fence, if you've never actually been in the building and you're physically capable of it, absolutely, I want to invite you to be a part of this. Yeah. Come check us out. Yeah. Now, maybe not next weekend. Next, <laughs> next week with, our, a little, a little with our confirmation busy. service. <laughs> I'll invite you to check out maybe the, the November 5th, yep. 4th and 5th. Yep. That would be a good week. If, but <laughs> but we, nonetheless, we invite you to come. And, again, if you are uh, watching go. with us, yeah, you just give us a call if you need information about it. But, again, we're going to push it over to traditional. Pastor Eric, thank you so much you. for being here. You guys have a great day and a great Sunday. See ya. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, fall day the Lord has given to us today. It is great to have you uh, in the house of the Lord this morning. Those of you who are watching this morning, thank you uh, for tuning in this morning on News Channel Nebraska or our Facebook page or our YouTube page or however you're watching this morning. It is a, a privilege and honor to have you with us. We are continuing our sermon series that Pastor Eric kicked off for us uh, last week entitled To the Church from Paul. We're looking at a number of Paul's epistles and uh, today we're going to be looking at the book of Ephesians. Uh, Pastor Eric mentioned last week that the books are uh, in there just uh, not chronologically, I think, just according to length. So last week we looked at, uh, at Galatians uh, I think it was six chapters. This is also six chapters, but apparently a few less verses or something. Uh, so it is, uh, it is the second of the books that we'll be looking at. And just a great, great, powerful book uh, from St. Paul, obviously. Uh, it's the Bible. I guess that makes it great. I don't know if to tell you it's great. But just uh, a lot of good things in there. Let's start with our opening hymn, hymn number 703.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and then walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us that with you as our rule and guide, we may so pass through things temporal so that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated to turn our attention to the reading of God's holy word. This morning's Old Testament lesson comes to us from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. Uh, in the 45th chapter, we begin in verse 1. This is what the Lord says to his anointed in Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to stri strip kings of their armor and open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored up in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor. 
Though you do not acknowledge me, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all things. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from the opening words of Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. I, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians of God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, uh, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he, re he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand this morning for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. And then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians' teacher, they said. We know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. And he asked them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you to open up your bulletin and get this piece of paper out of your bulletin. There should be a piece of paper like this in your bulletin. Uh, it has the title of the sermon to the church from Paul. It might be the last page in your bulletin. Uh, and you'll notice that there is a QR code here. I don't know if any of you uh, use a QR code, but if you have a smartphone or an iPad and you uh, turn your camera on and you aim it at that, it'll light up. Do you not have one? I'll share mine with you. No, you can have that one. Uh, that, that, it'll light up on your phone, and then you can just touch it, and it'll actually take you to a YouTube video. And in this case, it takes you to a YouTube video that uh, will explain to you the book of Ephesians. It's maybe a seven-minute long video. Super, super cool. Uh, a stick animation. Uh, a great summary of the entire uh, book of the Bible. Uh, uh, and so I would encourage you uh, to do that. If you can't figure out how to do that, uh, talk to me or talk to one of the other church members or... or uh, uh, talk to uh, Miss Brink here, our young high school. She knows how to, she knew how to do it when she was three years old because she was born at the right time, right? Uh, she can show you how to use your iPhone. And, do, and then uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the book of Ephesians has six chapters. 
And so if you look at that piece of paper, there is a verse out of each chapter. If you go to our YouTube page or our Instagram page every day, uh, there will be a link with that verse on it. And then underneath, there's a, uh, letters that are in blue. And if you touch that, it takes you to a place where you can read chapter 1 of Ephesians on Monday, chapter 2 of Ephesians on Tuesday. Or if some of you want to do it this really newfangled way, you might have this book in your house called a Bible. <laughs> and you can actually crack that baby right open to Ephesians, and tomorrow, read chapter 1 right out of a book with pages and, and letters on paper. I know, it's kind of a crazy idea, but maybe. Uh, and then you can mark in it. It's like, hey, that's a good verse, right? You can mark in it, and you can put notes in it. Uh, but, but here's what I'm hoping. Uh, we're, this sermon series, I think, is about eight weeks long. Uh, and so we're going to be doing this for two months. And, and here's what I hope, that, that in two months, you, you begin to develop a habit of reading the Bible, spending time in God's Word. Experts say that if you do the same thing for 21 days in a row, you begin to develop a habit. So we're going to do it uh, for 60 days in a row, and I hope that it begins to develop a habit for you, right? At the beginning of the sermon, or the beginning of the year, we started, we said uh, this all in, gather, grow, and go. This is, this is a grow series. As we spend time in God's Word, we pray that His Spirit grows our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we get started this morning, I have a question for you. What is God's plan? What's God's master plan? What's God's master plan for the world? What's God's master plan for our Savior who lives in church? What's God's master plan for you? What's, what's God's master plan for your friends, your neighbors, your family, your loved ones, your fellow citizens of, of Norfolk or Northeast Nebraska? What's God's plan What's God's plan for you who are watching this morning? As we look at the book of Ephesians <coughs> um, this morning, uh, we're going we're gonna to discover what God's plan is. In, in fact, God begins, in, or Paul begins in the opening verses uh, of, of Ephesians, and, and he lays out for us what God's plan is. It says in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, uh, beginning just in the fourth verse. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. We don't even have to look at the rest of it. We can just look at that one. He chose us in him before when? The creation of the world. Now just stop and think about that for a minute. Right? If you get that book out that I was just talking about, that Bible, and you open it, open up the cover, and you go to the very first page in your Bible, uh, that's not the index, or, but the, you know, the actual Bible, Genesis 1-1. You read Genesis 1-1, it says, in the beginning, uh, was, the earth was formless and void. Before that. <laughs> right? We don't have, there's nothing recorded, because there was, it wasn't, no time was, didn't even exist. Before the creation of the world, God chose you. That's amazing, isn't it? You know what even makes it more amazing? Is God knew what was going to happen in Genesis chapter 3. He knew Adam and Eve was going to sin. And he knew that because of Adam and Eve's sin, the only chance to restore his creation was to send his son Jesus. And he knew, that he knew what was going to happen on a cross outside of Jerusalem. And still, God chose on day one to create the, the heavens and the earth. He chose you. What, what's God's plan? For you to spend eternity with him in heaven. That's God's master plan for his creation. He wants you, all of you, he wants you, all of you, to spend eternity. With, he wants every man, woman, and child who's ever going to be born on planet earth to spend eternity with him in heaven. That is God's plan for his creation. Some of you might remember Pastor Keith Christensen. Remember Pastor Keith? Uh, Pastor Keith used to say this, true or false? He always, he always quizzed her, right? True or false? Heaven is filled with forgiven sinners. Well, yeah, that's true, Pastor. True or false? Hell is filled with forgiven sinners. That's true as well. They just rejected the free gift. It is God's master plan that everyone would spend eternity with him in heaven. Not everyone's going to, but that is his plan. And then uh, a few verses later in, in 1, uh, 15 through 18, uh, Paul says this, For this reason, every since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the people, I have 
not stop giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you were called, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Go back one verse to, to verse 17. Remember what I, I told you I've been praying for you for 2023? The 2023 becomes the most spiritually significant year of your life. Anybody heard me say that before? Right, that's my prayer for you. What, what's Paul's prayer uh, for, for the church of Ephesus in, in, uh, in 117? Uh, the, the, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him even better. Right? Paul, Paul begins by, re, by rejoicing. Yeah, I, I want you to know that before the creation of the world, God had you in mind. He chose you. You're his son. You're his daughter. Man, that's great news. But here's my prayer for you, that you get to know him better. Be, because here's the reality, folks. It, as much as I think I know about the love and the grace and the mercy and the kindness and the goodness of God, I, I can never mine to the depth of God's love for me. I will never be able uh, to, to mine to the depth of God's love for all of his creation. So that's my prayer for me, that I might get to know him better. Not, not that I could win at Bible trivia, but that I might come to a fuller, richer, deeper understanding of what it means that the God of creation predestined me before day one of creation. And he knows everything there is to know about me, and he still wants me. He knows everything there is to know about you, and he still wants you. I pray that the God and Father of heaven gives you the Holy Spirit that you may get to know him better. And, and then uh, Paul tells us who we are, but then in, in chapter 2, he, he tells us who we were. He, he begins, the opening verses of chapter 2 says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who would now work in those who are disobedient. Here's, here's who you used to be. You used to be spiritually dead. You, used to, you at one time, were, were enemies of God. You were, you, you were alienated from God because of your sin. Folks, th th this is an incredibly important passage for, for us to, to come to that fuller, deeper, richer understanding of to know Jesus better, because this verse reminds us the role that we play in our own salvation. This is who you used to be. You were dead, and now you're alive. What does a dead person have to do with making himself alive? Zero, right? If, 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 if I have to have, like, appendix surgery this week, and it goes terribly wrong, and I die on the operating table, this is just an analogy. I don't really need an appendix surgery, so... It, it, but let's just say something terrible goes wrong, and, and, and during a routine appendix uh, operation, I code, and Pastor Lee is dead. What, what's the chances that I, laying on the table dead, might say to the doctor, hey, doctor, get the paddles over there. It might help. Zero percent chance, right? Hey, doctor, give me a shot of that epinephrine right in my heart, and maybe it'll start beating again. Zero percent chance. If there's any chance I'm going to come back alive, what's going to happen? The doctor and his team are going to have to do something. Here's the truth. You were spiritually dead, and the great physician, Jesus, did something miraculous. He entered into his creation, became obedient to death, even death on a cross, that we might have life. We need to understand that I have 0% in my responsibility of my salvation. Because there's some Christian denominations who don't get that right. There, there are Christian denominations that say, you've got to pray this prayer. You heard those, right? Pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner and I need you to come into my heart. Is there anything wrong with praying that prayer? No. <laughs> but do I need to invite Jesus into my heart? No, Jesus uh, works and does where Jesus works and, and does. Or, or there are some churches that, that think after you die, I need your family and friends to pray for me for 100 years or 500 years or 1,000 years and maybe they can pray me right into heaven. I was dead in my transgressions and I've been made alive in Jesus Christ. Period. 
Jesus gets 100% of the credit if Pastor Lee ends up in heaven, if I hold on to that faith till the day I die. Right? So don't, don't be misled by, by the, the, the teaching of some other, uh, of some other church. Right? So, so I was dead, now I'm alive. And Paul rejoices, reminds us again just how, how, how great this free gift is in, in Ephesians 2. This is uh, probably one of Luther's, Martin Luther's favorite verses. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. It says, first, by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not from yourself. It is the what? Gift of God, so that no one can boast. Not by works, so no one can boast. For you are God's handiwork. The old NIV used to say you're his craftsmanship. Some translations say you're his masterpiece. Kind of like that, huh? You're his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. It's by grace I've been saved, this through faith, not by works, so that no one can boast. Folks, if, if I have to do e even one little activity uh, to, to get salvation, then all of a sudden it's not a free gift. It's a wage. I earned it. God owes it to me. I did something. I prayed the prayer. I accepted Jesus. No. Nope. I received a free gift. It's a gift, not a, not a wage, not a salary. God gave it to me for free. It's a free gift given to you by God so that no one can boast. Right? So it's a free gift. Paul, uh, Paul then uh, continues in Romans uh, or in Ephesians 3, 14 uh, through 21 with another prayer. So he says, for this reason I kneel before the Father. So he's praying again. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. And I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that being rooted and established in love, you may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of God or love of Christ and to know his love that surpasses all knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God and now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let, let, let's go back to, to 17b and following, where, where St. Paul says, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. Stay right there. Right? Remember what we said in verse 1? I want you to know him better. Paul's saying the same thing here. I want, you, I want you to understand how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the Lord, love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what I said? I'll never be able to mind the depth of the love of Christ. <laughs> But here's what I want to begin to understand, just how, how long and how wide and how high and how deep is the love of God for no good bum like Pastor Lee. The reality is you and I will never come to the end of the height and the width and the breadth and the depth of the love of God. And, and then a, a, a few verses later, verse 20. He says, and now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Think about that verse for a minute. To him who is able to do immeasurably, I can't even measure it, Paul says. I don't know about you, but I got a pretty vivid imagination. And I can think of some really crazy things. And Paul says, God's ability is immeasurably more than you could ever ask or imagine, Pastor Lee. So don't even try to imagine what God might be able to do. It's immeasurably more. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the God we serve is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine? I do. I, I believe that. And every one of us in this room should believe that if you've been a, a member of our Savior Religion Church for eight years or more. Because remember eight years ago, uh, a city official said there will never be a church. There will never be a church in that Budweiser building. Anybody remember an, uh, an official of the city saying that? Sure did, didn't they? It'll never happen. Just as well quit now. Well, we've now been doing ministry in this building for a little over five years. 
On Friday, Hannah was coming home, our, 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 our music lady, she was coming home from St. Louis. She flew on Southwest from, from St. Louis to Chicago, from Chicago to Omaha. And, and she was on Southwest, and any of you ever flown on Southwest, and you got to wait in line, right? You don't get a real seat number. And so she's waiting in line, and because we're cheap, she was like in group D, 47 or something. Right? So she's going to get a middle seat. Here's what I get. Hannah, you're going to be in a middle seat. So Hannah's uh, in line waiting to get on her plane. She's standing there, and she knows there's this couple there, and they keep like looking at her. Everything, you know. Finally, the lady comes over and she said, she's in, a, in an airport in Chicago. The lady comes over to her and says, aren't you that singer at our Savior Lutheran Church? <laughs> and now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. From a city official saying, there will never be a church in that building that not only is there a church in this building, but because of the power of TV and the internet, we get, to, we get to tell thousands of people every Sunday about the love of Jesus. Did any of you imagine that five years ago? I sure didn't. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Paul concludes the second half of the book of Ephesians by, by, just, by just saying, Here, here's what being a follower of Jesus looks like. Right? This, is, this is the way it looks. And, and he, he gives us a great analogy in Ephesians 4, uh, 22 to 24. Paul, Paul says this, you, you were taught uh, with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So, so, so here's the analogy Paul uses. Uh, I, I, as a follower of Jesus, my, my, my goal, my job, my, my aim is to take off the old self and to put on the new self. To, to take off the, the old uh, corrupted Adam and to put on the new sinless Adam. To take off these filthy rags and put on this robe of righteousness that the Lord has provided for us. And that's hard work, isn't it? Right? Some of you have been Christians for 50, 60, 80, 90 years. And, and, and still, there, there's this old garment that I like to hold on to. And Paul says, get rid of that. Get rid of that sin. And put on this. Well, why, why does Paul encourage us to do that? Is, is God going to love us more if we do? God can't love us anymore than he already does. So, so Paul doesn't encourage us to take off the old self and put on the new self for, so, so for somehow for our salvation, uh, although if we continue to live in the old way, it can affect our salvation. Paul encourages us to take off the old self and put on the new self because you and I are the light of the world, as Jesus said. Your friends and neighbors see Jesus in you. And, and the more of this I take off, and, and the more of this I put on, the less and less of me they see and the more and more of Jesus they see. But like I said, it's hard work. How, how is it that, that, I, that I take off the old self and I put on the new self? Well, at the end of the day, it's not me who does it. It's the Holy Spirit who does it. And how does the Holy Spirit work? Oh yeah, the Holy Spirit works through the Word of God. So we've come full circle. I did with that piece of paper I gave you, right? Right? Why do I want you to read the Word of God? Why do I want to develop a habit in your life? Because it's through the Word of God that the Holy Spirit helps us take off the old self and put on the new self. And when we put on the new self and we become more and more like the righteousness of Jesus, we become a light in a dark world. We become people who point people to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now may the peace of God which transcends all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with our sermon song, hymn number 687.
invite you to stand as you were able. We continue our worship service with the recitation of our Confession of Faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. go to our time of prayer. It's, when we, it's the time when we go to the Lord with the prayers and the needs of our congregation. As always, I invite you to take the bulletin with you. It lists all the prayers of our congregation, but there's some names to be added as well. Uh, we're praying for Gary Wolf for upcoming surgery, for Stan Edwards and Bill Bruning. Both of them have received an accident lately in, or recently and are injured, so we're praying for them. For Carleen Sommerfeld, who's currently hospitalized. We're praying for Roger Caney for upcoming surgery this week. We're praying for Andrea Kipp, uh, Pastor Kip's daughter-in-law, she's going into the hospital for several weeks of intense uh, cancer treatment. We're praying for Pastor Frank. You notice he hasn't been here in a few weeks. He's not been feeling well, so we're praying for Pastor Frank. That's where we're praying for the violence that we see around the world, that God's peace would reign throughout the world. Let's go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Lord God, lead us to praise your most holy name, that we know that by no other name we are saved, and it is by your work that we have been saved. Lord God, help us to hold on to that truth, that nothing we need to do needs to contribute to this salvation. It is a free gift in your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, invite us to see our neighbors as those who have also been forgiven, who have received the forgiveness of their sins. Maybe they don't know it. But Lord God, equip us to be your missionaries to the world. Equip us by the leaders you've placed around us and the provisions you've prepared that we would go out with this message and more and more people would hear that it is by your Son that we are indeed saved. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, empower teachers and preachers and missionaries and parents and grandparents and all of us who have been equipped with your word to see where you've placed us, to see the mission field is ripe, to go out with this word, to go out with the certain, certain hope that salvation has been attained through your son Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, we lift up the violence that we see in this world, that bloodshed and innocent lives suffer. But Lord God, we know that you have your people in every place. That the faithful have been put in the position. And Lord God, we ask that you protect those who are in harm's way. But also guide leaders, guide Christians, guide your people and those whom you've called to be agents of peace in their place. That peace may reign in our lands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord God, we do lift up those who are sick and ill and hospitalized this day. For those in our prayer bulletins this day, for the those names we have in the silence of our hearts. But we also lift up Gary and Stan and Carlene and Bill and Roger and Andrea and Pastor Frank, that you and your spirit would guide and be with them all, that you would give them peace in their time of need, that you would surround them with the doctors and the nurses and the medical arts, that you are your gifts to this creation, that they may find healing and they may find rest. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. All these, these things, whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of your Son, who died and arose again, who now lives and reigns with you, and who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We turn our attention to our offering, which is a time when we give back to the Lord a portion of what he has so freely given us. We invite Steve forward with our collected tithe and offering. If you have one in hand still, there'll be a basket outside the door after the service. Thank you, sir. And as always, there's multiple ways to give digitally using the Church Center app, the website, snail mail, however you've chosen to support the ministry, we say thank you because it is a blessing to be able to do so much as a church here with the resources that you have so freely equipped us with. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer now, shall we? 
Lord God, you have gifted us with life, salvation, and our daily bread. As we grow in our knowledge of you your uns and your unsurpassed love, let our tithes and offerings this day be a small response to that great love. Bless these contributions so that our church may go out into the world, grow in his faith, and gather more to hear your most loving witness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and grant you his peace. We sing our closing hymn, hymn number 655, and our video announcements will follow. Welcome to worship with us this weekend. We are excited that you are here with us. We are starting our pie sales and our youth ministry. This is a fundraiser that we do every single year, and there's information in the bulletin, as well as youth, if you would like to sell some pies to earn some money for youth events, you can do that by picking up an order form at the Welcome Center or in the Senior High Room. Also, on November 21st, we are going to be doing our live nativity, partnering with the other LCMS churches here in Norfolk at the Hometown Holidays. It'll be that evening from 4.30 to 8. So mark your calendars. Soon we'll be looking for volunteers and items for that. Lastly, this coming Sunday at our 10.30 contemporary service, we will be having our confirmation service. This will be our largest class that we have had here at Our Savior. So seating is very limited. We are doing reserved seating for the family, so we only have single seats available here and there throughout the worship center. We encourage all of you to possibly worship at a different time that Sunday between Saturday night, Sunday morning, or even online. Hey, our Savior families. Last weekend, we gave away almost 40 Bibles to first graders. If you have a first grader that didn't receive a Bible, reach out to me or the church office, and we'll make sure they get one. Hey, our Savior. We've got some exciting news about Christ Connect. Christ Connect will be moving dates and locations starting on the 29th. On the 29th, we will start meeting on Sundays at 7 o'clock in Union 73 on Northeast Campus. And we are also collecting information on where our college students are located so we can send them care packages in the coming months. 